Well, for more on this, let's now talk to probably one of the finest legal minds we have in India, the former Attorney General uh, of India, one of the country's top lawyers, Mukul Rohatki. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rohatki. It's always a pleasure and a privilege uh, speaking to you. Now, as you've been hearing this entire conversation that's taking place between the US, Canada and India uh, over this entire Panun question, alleged assassination plots, uh, FBI director is going to be coming out here. Uh, I'm, I'm actually curious, what does international law actually say about issues like this? Um, Mr. Rothke, when you talk about the rule of law, what does the rule of law say about cases like this? See, I, I mean, before we come to the law, from whatever I have seen in the papers, uh, there is no doubt that Mr. Pannu is a person who is wanted in India for several crimes. Yeah. He is an accused in several cases in India. He is a staunch Khalistani. He has been making and issuing grave threats, sometimes to blow up an Air India plane. The most recent thing I found was horrific to say that I will deal with Parliament of India and so on and so forth. So there is no doubt that, uh, you know, he is wanted in this country. As far as India is concerned, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, we don't have a policy of having a Mossad type of agency like Israel to hunt down and kill people who are opposed to India or opposed to the sovereignty of India. So this kind of allegation by the US in conjunction with Canada, I think is absolutely nuts. This seems to be a, a kind of a cross, crossfire in the sense that such kind of people will also have enemies within their own groups or organizations or community, etc. And some other material may be available, I don't know. But there is no way that the government of India can be alleged to have a plot for killing somebody, etc. Now, if the FBI is going to examine the matter, as far as government of India is concerned, the government of India must make over all the information it has regarding the activities of Mr. Pannu, not only his involvement in subservient sub activities in India, whether it's in Amritsar or elsewhere, even his activities abroad, which are targeting Indians, Indian diplomats in Canada and America, a full dossier should be made to show that he is a, a criminal, you can call it international criminal, who should be tried not only by FBI, but by international criminal courts. So let me just take you up on that a little bit further. We sometimes hear from politicians, from, from leaders in Canada and analysts in the United States that look, there are freedom of speech issues out here. People uh, in countries like Canada or the US can get away by saying X, Y, Z, but because they are covered by the freedom of speech. Now, I want to get your legal opinion on this. What what Panun has been saying and doing, if, if, if he's making a direct threat, for example, against Indian diplomats, if you're saying you're going to blow up an airliner, if you're making a, 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 a threat uh, against parliament. And let, let's face it, these are credible threats because the groups that Panun has been associated with have actually blown up an airliner in the past. In 1985, they blew up that Air India airliner. So it's not just a, a threat in the air. These remarks that are being made, does it come under freedom of speech or is it actually a violation of the law? Is it an incitement to violence and is it an open terror threat that has to be dealt with as a terror threat? I entirely agree with you, Vikram. In no country, however much the right of freedom of speech may be guaranteed by the Constitution, as it is in India too and as it is in the US or by convention in the UK and some other countries, no country can allow such kind of utterances to attack parliaments of different nations, blow up planes, attack diplomats, say that their security will be threatened by such kind of people. These are downright terrorist activities and terrorist utterances. No amount of freedom of speech 
हाउवर लैटिट्यूड ए पर्टिकुलर कंट्री में गिव टू फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एवरी थिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड हैज सर्टन बॉर्डर्स देर इज नथिंग विच इज एब्सोलूट नो फ्रीडम इज एब्सोलूट टू गो एंड यू नो डू दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स अकॉर्डिंग टू मी दिस इज एन ऑफेंस वॉट ही इज डूइंग इवन ऑन द यू एस एंड कनेडियन सॉयल those countries should take such people to task all right mr rohit ki now of course the the fbi director is going to be out here india is presumably going to be making a certain case uh, against panu and, and and others like him now i have to ask you you've been attorney general for so many years if you had to make the case to sort of tell the americans or the canadians that look you're saying follow the due process of law follow the process of law and if you have enough evidence and you make a good case and we are going to be taking action on that under the rule of law if that's what the us and canada are saying then find that case needs to be made under which laws and under which system do you think india can make a legitimate case that the us and the canada and other such countries have to take action against people like panu what would be your how would you make that case yeah. according to me it's very simple forget what he wants to do in india mm-hmm. let us stop what he is threatening to do in canada and the us because he is on that soil and he has dual citizenship of those countries from whatever i have read now if you are making open threats to kill people there destroy or harm the indian missions in those countries harm the diplomats and their families it is obvious that the local laws of that country will take action as any any country would i mean if somebody is in india and who makes these kind of threats we have our penal laws to take action so the penal laws in america and canada will provide enough uh, uh, basis for the law to take action against such people because it is a threat to kill a threat to commit a murder and from an organization which has had a particular amount of uh, uh, similar background as you have said so what more is required the utterances are there and to say and, and i have been seeing on tv some people who are uh, uh, of that bent of mind who are egged on by these kind of people who go to gurudwaras and heckle our diplomats and all that and you know these diplomats have to go away etc this is clearly a threat to security of individuals security of the property of a sovereign nation and an attempt to to threaten their families according to me it is an open and shut case what are these countries waiting for what is this kind of rule of law what is this kind of freedom of speech that you are inciting these kind of uh, things to happen against a sovereign nation and its diplomat so you are essentially saying that their own laws can be quoted to say that you got to take action uh, again against somebody like panu but in addition are there elements of international law that india can can draw on for example the vienna convention which says that the safety of diplomats is sacrosanct see as i told you india will certainly invoke the vienna convention for diplomats and their safety but more elementary than that is that you invoke normal criminal jurisprudence in america and canada and say that individuals forget that they are diplomats individuals are being threatened in this fashion by an individual who is a resident of america and has a citizenship of america and therefore action should be taken it is nothing to do with what happens in pakistan or this that or the other it's as simple as that we don't need to look at any other law All right, Mr. Rohit, thank you so much. Got it very clearly what what you're saying, and um, you know, hopefully, those in position of power will be listening to some of this and uh, perhaps framing the appropriate reply, replies and responses to the FBI director when he's here um, next week. Thank you so much for joining us.